In order to give a background of uh, the problem in Cyprus, you need to know about its origins. 1960, when independence was granted by the British, there were three guarantor states, uh, Britain, uh, Greece, and, the United St and, excuse me, and Turkey, and all three were empowered to intervene in Cyprus if there was a threat to the constitutional order. That threat soon emerged in 1963 when Archbishop Markarios, the Greek Cypriot leader, basically torched the constitution and the Turkish Cypriots were driven out of their homes. They were oppressed and uh, inhabited a small portion of the north. Uh, things simmered for many years and then in 1974, in fact, uh, there was a coup d'etat in Greece and there was an effort to utilize that particular event to exterminate Turkish Cypriots from the island. Um, the Turkish government then intervened militarily to stop the genocide. It was an intervention really on July 20th, uh, 1974, that was sustained as perfectly legal under the 1960 constitution by the European Court, uh, the Council of Europe rather. But where are we today? Uh, that's just background to explain why there is divisiveness there. Since 1974, there's basically been a divided island. Uh, there's a green line that's policed by United Nations forces called UNICEF, and the parties have been negotiating for long years to try to reunify the country along what we might call a bicommunal, bizonal federal system. Uh, at present, there are ongoing negotiations between the Turkish Cypriot president and the Greek Cypriot president. Uh, about a fourth meeting will be held later on in July, and it's looking towards perhaps a comprehensive settlement in uh, negotiations to begin in September. Uh, there was a major, major effort four years ago, 2004, uh, to develop a consensus that would enable reunification under a system that protected both the Turkish Cypriot identity as well as the Greek Cypriot interests being the more populous part of the island. It was called the Kofi Annan Plan after the then Secretary General of the United Nations. At that time, because the Turkish Cypriots were making enormous concessions, risking, if you will, some of their safety based upon the idea that the Turkish and the Greek Cypriots would not, like they had earlier, torch the constitution, uh, voted overwhelmingly in favor of the Annan plan. Uh, this is in April of 2004. Uh, the Greek Cypriots uh, voted against it. And you could ask, well, why was that? Here was their chance to have a unified uh, island and really under their dominance. And why did the Greek Cypriots vote against it? Well, the fact is that for long, long years, the international community has treated the Turkish Cypriots as a pariah unit. Uh, there's an international embargo, no sporting events, no air transportation, no direct phone, no direct mail, uh, there's no direct trade. Uh, so the Greek Cypriots were waiting because they thought that the Turkish Cypriots might be strangled. Moreover, the Greek Cypriots were the recognized uh, governors of the island internationally. Only Turkey had recognized the Turkish uh, government as internationally separate and discreet. And moreover, more recently, the Greek Cypriots had received entry into the European Union. Now, the international community, in order to persuade the Turkish Cypriots to take this risk, promised that if they voted in favor and the, the Greek Cypriots balked, there would be some kind of promise or reward to the Turkish Cypriots, namely in the form of reducing its international isolation. These were promises made uniformly four years ago, and all of them have been uniformly broken. So when we're asking, well, what can we do now internationally to try to spur a final uh, resolution of this long-standing dispute, it's really to send a signal to the Greek Cypriots that intransigence no longer pays. How can they do that? Have sporting events, soccer games uh, with the Turkish Cypriots, have direct air flights uh, with the Greek Cypriots, excuse me, the Turkish Cypriots, uh, begin trade relations. All these signals would say to the Greek Cypriots, time is no longer on your side. That hasn't happened at present. And so uh, right now, I'm not overly optimistic uh, that in the September when comprehensive negotiations will probably begin, uh, that there will be any or uh, incentive on the Greek Cypriot side to make any concessions. After all, if they suffer nothing from simply yielding nothing and the Turkish Cypriots remain under an embargo, it's hard for a Greek Cypriot politician to go back to his constituents and say, well, I gave up this for what, they'll ask. Uh, so I think the United States has an exceptionally important role to play here. It has been instrumental in helping and facilitating the Anan plan. It obviously uh, has a major role globally because it's a superpower. And I think the United States, if it was really serious about pushing this forward, should honor its promise made in 2004 
to begin to have direct contacts with the Turkish Cypriots. Not to try to insult or snub the Greek Cypriots, but to recognize the real politic of international negotiations. One side has to have something to fear to lose if they aren't compromising uh, in order for them to move forward. Yeah, and the absent of that, I'm really not optimistic that these negotiations will lead anywhere forward as they had previously to the Anan plan for close to 30 years. Uh, and the Turkish Cypriots simply can't be expected uh, on their own uh, to become vassals to the Greek Cypriot state by yielding their rights and protections while getting nothing in return.